Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. Microsoft SQL Server 2022 introduced a new feature called Intel QAT Backup Compression. And this feature lets you get better backup compression performance using either a software mode, just using drivers, or a hardware-assisted hardware mode that requires Intel QAT-capable hardware. I've done a lot of testing with this feature over the past several months, and I've actually built some systems of my own to do testing in my own lab. So my latest creation is a machine I call Storage Beast. And this is an AMD Ryzen 5955WX processor with 256 gigs of RAM and 128 PCIe Gen 4 lanes. And I've packed that system with 27 PCIe Gen 4 drives so I can see how much backup performance I can get out of a system using local consumer grade drives. So what you see on the screen shows you some of the statistics and specifications of that system. And it's a smaller, lower end SKU, so I call it a baby thread ripper. It's only got 16 cores and 32 threads. And if you look at the CPU-Z benchmark score, the single thread performance is very similar to a Ryzen 9 5950X processor, and the multi-core performance is actually slightly better than that Ryzen 9 processor. This, is, this Threadripper is based on the Zen 3 architecture, and it actually was released a little bit over a year ago. It was an OEM only until August of 2022, and you can get it for the DIY market now, and that's what I did. So I bought a processor at Micro Center, and then a pretty nice ASUS motherboard to go with it. And that ASUS motherboard has seven PCIe Gen 4 slots. They're all X16. And that particular processor does not have integrated graphics, so I have to use one of my slots for a dedicated discrete GPU, but I used a very low-end GPU on purpose. And then I filled the other six slots with a ASUS HyperX Gen 4 M.2 to PCIe add-in cards, and each one of those holds four PCIe Gen 4 SSDs. So there's three native M.2 slots on the motherboard, and then I've got 24 more M.2 SSDs in the system in those add-in cards. That lets me get a lot of Gen 4 PCIe performance in my system. And what I've done here is I've got a two terabyte SQL Server 2022 database, and I've built it with 24 data files. So each data file is on its own Gen 4 PCIe SSD. And that lets me read all the files in parallel when I'm doing a backup. So after building this system, what I decided to do was four different kinds of SQL Server backup tests. And I just wanna make this clear that what I'm doing here is not something I would ever do in production with a real SQL Server database, it's just in my lab. So what I've done is the first kind of test is just a backup to null, which has SQL Server read all the data files and the log file of a database, and then actually throw the data away that would have normally gone to a backup file. The second kind of test is a backup with no backup compression whatsoever. So it's actually writing multiple backup files and I'm doing what's called a striped backup. So I'm reading from 24 drives and then writing the backup file to the same 24 drives. And that's gonna be faster than using any kind of backup compression if you've got very fast storage like I do on this system. And then the next test is doing a backup of that database to a striped backup using native SQL Server backup compression that's been in the product since SQL Server 2008. And that puts more CPU stress on the system. If you do a striped backup with 24 backup files on a system with this number of cores, you're gonna peg the CPU in 100%. And that's going to have a really bad effect on your regular SQL Server workload while the backup is running. And then the next kind of backup that I do for this test is a backup using Intel QAT software mode backup compression. 
and that's going to be more efficient than the old Microsoft backup compression. It still puts a lot of stress on your CPU, but it's usually going to be more efficient and run faster, even if your CPUs are nearly pegged. And I can't do hardware assisted mode because my AMD processor does not have QAT acceleration built in. And my QAT 8970 card that I bought, I've lent it to Wendell Wilson of Level 1 Techs since we're doing some joint testing on one of his systems. So I don't have that card available right now, but I'm gonna show you the results of those four different kinds of backup tests on this system. And again, what I'm doing here is using consumer level drives. I'm not using ECC memory. I'm doing a lot of things that you would not do on a real SQL Server instance. But again, this is sort of like somebody who takes their car to the drag strip and does some things that you wouldn't do on the street just to see how fast you can make something go. Now, before I get to the SQL Server test results, I wanna do a little bit more talking about this system and some of its quirks. So I've run ADA64 on this system, and I've got eight DIMMs in the system, and I've got XMP enabled, so I've got pretty tight memory timings. And this is DDR4-3200 RAM. So with eight DIMMs in the system, that gives me eight channels of memory, and I'm getting about 88 gigabytes per second of read throughput into the actual memory. And that's pretty important when you're doing this sort of testing that you have lots and lots of storage throughput. You wanna make sure that your memory subsystem can keep up with your storage. And that's kind of an unusual situation, but again, I built this thing, it's called the Storage Beast on purpose. And then I've also got the Solideam Synergy Toolkit up here. And this is a new utility which just released a few days ago that's really very useful. And this system has 27 M.2 drives in it, and they're not all Solideam. I've got some Samsung 980s, Samsung 990s. I've got some SK Hynix P41 Platinums in here, and I've got quite a few Solideam drives. And you might not have heard of Solideam, and what they are is when Intel sold, sold off their storage division, SK Hynix bought the former Intel NAND storage division. So a lot of the engineers and other people who worked for Intel now work for, for Solideam and they've got all that experience and knowledge. So they've come out with a really good toolkit that's very useful if you have Solideam drives. And they've also got a dedicated NVMe driver just for Solideam drives instead of using the Microsoft driver. So they get better performance with their own driver. And that's something I think is a really good development. I wish more vendors would do that instead of using the Microsoft driver. And then finally, I've got Crystal Disk Markup for a couple of the different drives in this system. And there's a difference. Not all NVMe Gen 4 drives are, or PCIe Gen 4, I should say, drives are created equal. And Samsung 980s are a little bit slower when it comes to sequential throughput than some of the newer ones that have come out like the 990 Pro and that SK Hynix P41 and these Solidine P44 Pros. And another thing that's really important for this sort of testing is that you want larger capacity drives. So a two terabyte drive has more NAND cells and more channels, and it's also got a larger SLC write cache than a smaller capacity drive from the same family. So ideally, if money was no object, you'd have nothing but two terabyte drives rather than one terabyte or smaller. And you really wanna avoid anything smaller than one terabyte, both for testing like this and for a regular system. If you look at the price per gigabyte, it's a lot less expensive per gigabyte to get a two terabyte drive instead of a one terabyte drive or even smaller. So I happen to have one 500 gigabyte Samsung 980 Pro in this system. And that's the slowest drive by far for this system. And that's kind of unfortunate to be saying that, but, and the problem with it is that it's smaller and its SLC write cache is much smaller. So when I do real backups writing to that drive, if I'm not careful, I can exhaust the SLC cache and that makes write performance really deteriorate when you do that. 
All right, so it's finally time to run some real backup tests with SQL Server 2022. And again, this is a two terabyte database with 24 data files equally spread across 24 PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives. And so we're gonna run this backup to a null device, actually eight null devices, but it's not gonna actually write a backup file. And this is designed to measure how fast your system can read all of the data and all the data files and the log file for the database. So when I kick this off, what you'll see here on the messages tab is it's really flying through that two terabyte database. And over on the right, you can see one of the 24 drives has a, a lot of re uh, read activity, which is what you would expect for this test. And as it gets closer to being done, it slows down just a little bit. And I think the reason for that is I don't have identical drives and also my files are not exactly the same size. They're very close. So it slows down just a little bit at the end. I'm also, I think I'm bumping up against the read throughput of the memory in this system. So that's my main bottleneck that I'm hitting because I've got more total storage capacity than I'm seeing here for reads. So if you scroll down to the bottom here, you can see that it finished in 20.79 seconds and that's about 94, roughly 94 gigabytes per second of read throughput. And that's pretty amazing for a workstation system to do a two terabyte database backup that fast. But again, this is not a real backup. It's just reading all the data in the databases. And so after that, the next test run that I'm gonna do is running a backup with no backup compression. And that is something you'd wanna do if you've got really fast storage and you're not worried about the disk space involved for the backup. And if you run a backup with any kind of backup compression, you're gonna be paying a CPU cost unless you have Intel QAT hardware assisted backup compression, which really minimizes that. So I can't do that because again, I've lent my card to Wendell, but you know I can run the other kinds of tests here and that's what you're gonna see the results of at the end of this. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out. Really? You have a lot to say.